Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys and welcome to another video of Diamond Trading. My name is Daniel and today guys we're going to look at the company MGC Pharmaceuticals. This is a company that is hot at the moment, it could be big in the future and it's very cheap. This is why it's a penny stock. So let's dive right into it. So this is a company uh, that's just come on to the stock exchange. So I just said the London Stock Exchange. Uh, so if we have a look at the price, let's go and have a look at the price. So as you can see, it's come on the stock market on the 24th of uh, sorry on the 12th of uh, February. So that was a few days ago before the weekend uh, at 3.88, and now we see that the price is up to 4.40. Uh, by the way, this is pence. By the way, uh, those of you asking, this is actually pence. So it's actually four pence and forty. 4.4 pence okay so it's a, an absolute bargain it is very cheap this is why it's a penny stock um so yeah let's have a look a little bit about the company itself let's see who they are what they do and why sh should we invest in them uh, this is so mgc pharmaceuticals limited uh, or ticker symbol mxc uh, is a biopharma company with a nature to medicine strategy at the forefront of their emergent phytocannabinoid uh, and plant derived medicinal markets so the the idea what they want to do is basically um, deliver medicine by the legal way by using their their products that contain uh, to contain cannabis uh, to increase increase their quality of life basically so that's their their objective so they currently hold pipelines for both the phytocannabinoid based medications and unique, form, unique, uh, unique formulations, which they call phytomedicines, which are both proprietary for third parties, all under their GMP certified regulations and facilities. So they have a lot of uh, products at the moment that are working. And at the same time, they do have a lot of uh, uh, quite a few things in the pipeline regarding uh, development and testing, which is what we're going to look at uh, later on in the presentation. So guys, quite an important or a really interesting part of this is, uh, is uh, to mention that this company is the first one to be listed on the, or so shall I say, the medicinal cannabis company, the first one to be listed on a, on the London Stock Exchange. Okay, so um, the presenter on the left-hand side is asking the CEO, so the gentleman on the right-hand is the CEO, she's asking him why come to the UK, why go to the UK when they can actually go to the States where there's already approval in in a lot of the states. So it seems like a, a, a funny path to go down. So he's been asked that. So let's see what, uh, what he says to that. First of all, the cannabis is still not legal federally. It's legal state by state. The second part, we are a company that's operating in Europe. And therefore, we would like to have the listing and the capital market uh, in proximity to where we're operating. So our communication will be much more closer, uh, much more regular. And also, we need to remember that the LSE is the biggest listing in Europe. And uh, Okay, so I didn't mention this, so it's just a pop up on the screen here. They actually already have market cap. They already have a company uh, in Australia. Okay, with this. So it has, it has a market cap of 50 million. Uh, and uh, they've just secured a listing of 6.5 million for the, the, the London Stock Exchange. So as such, it gives its benefit. So we don't need to seek for uh, across the ocean places. Uh, Roby, very good morning to you. Um, it seems to me very obvious that Big Pharma is always looking for the next big growth driver. Hence, we saw the biotech purchasing boom uh, of the last decade or so as well. Uh, I, I read the odd article, I think there was one late last year, I was reading in November as well, about Big Pharma taking a very big look at medicinal cannabis as well. Is that something you think is happening or is about to happen, that a lot of these companies will start looking at players as yourself uh, and looking at the options for takeovers and merchandise? and acquisitions activity? Yes, I think the market uh, is moving to this direction. We can see the recent event with GW Pharma that uh, you all know. And I think that the cannabis market is moving in two vertical. One of them is the pharmaceutical, where MGC is on the path, where we're developing a medicines and we're looking for marketing authorization like the FDA and EMA. And there is the other path of the recreational. So in the end of the day, you will see two segments of the market where MGC, and I think some of the companies are sitting in this segment that the biotech is looking at and investing a lot of time and effort in developing of medicine and a treatment based on cannabinoids or natural substances. 
that the biotech industry will look into it. I think it's the next generation of medicine. So if we're going further to have a look at the research they're doing. They're doing uh, quite a lot of research uh, in relation to cancer, for example. So uh, quite interesting. So they actually have teamed up with the RMIT, which is one of Australia's biggest um, universities, and they're doing research uh, in their in their facility for, in relation to cancer research, nanotechnology-based drug delivery, and a combination of both traditional medicine and cannabinoid therapies at the same time. So we can actually break those down and have a look at the research areas they're related to. So in terms of the new so the clinical research and development they're doing are broken into three areas. Okay, so you have the neurology, oncology, and autoimmune. Okay, so as he mentioned in his uh, in his uh, interview, uh, they're going down the path of medicinal. Okay, so there's no recreational uh, um, cannabis use in their company. They concentrate in 100% on uh, clinical. Uh, and they're looking at these areas. So neurology, looking at uh, people with uh, epilepsy, they mention cerebral palsy. Okay, so they say that they have these two key products, which are on the right hand side, which could uh, benefit the clients, for example, with Alzheimer's, etc. So that's quite an interesting area that they're doing research on. Then we have the oncology. So they're looking at cachia, pain, and also for ca cancer treatment, which we'll go into in a, in a minute, which is a, a, an article and that is quite interesting. And then looking at the autoimmune systems. Okay, so looking at uh, using it, the, the product as an anti-inflammatory or antibacterial. So there's a lot of, uh, and actually in the third Sorry, I didn't mention, but they're in the third phase of clinical trials on that one. So on the top, on the neurology, then the both in the second stages. So yeah, there's still some way to go. There's nothing that's actually confirmed. So this is also always a risk with a company because it always sounds nice from the outside and it's all very good, uh, but it's still in its trialing uh, stages at the moment so yeah this is a risk you sort of have to sort of you want to have something that's a bit more concrete but it does give you some sort of edge does give you some sort of curiosity uh, how this company can actually probably move forward um, but on the basis of what that's always the question you always want to look at a company to see right what's the um, uh, financials okay they don't have financials as a key it's a penny stock let's go and see what they have they have something good but there's nothing there yet that that says to you right they could be onto something here so we'll continue with some more media which is quite interesting because i i always like to hear these interviews so this gives you a good idea so there's a further interview from sky news with the the ceo uh, about the company is that uh, london investors may not necessarily have the uh, experience or knowledge of the uh, medicinal cannabis sector in the way that say examples in uh, investors in north america may Yes, uh, as we are the first, it's meaning that none before was able to invest in this sector here in the UK. And we are opening the door to the investor to be able to invest in the UK and not just seek to invest outside, uh, especially where in some countries it's uh, even for, forbidden for UK to invest due to POCA. And uh, by getting the approval of the FCA, we basically open the door not just to companies to list on the UK, and to develop the industry in the UK, but also for investment and institute from the UK to invest in this sector. What are the big things that investors need to get their head around when they're looking at this sector? What are the misunderstandings they may have? Okay, so guys, this is for you. We're listening out for this one because we're the investors. We want to hear what he has to say. Um, first of all, we need to separate between two parts of the industries, the recreational industries that we see uh, dominate in United States and uh, prove uh, not federally but state by state to the medical cannabis or the pharmaceutical part of it, uh, similar to what we see with GW and MGC and there are other companies that will follow that looking on the cannabis as a treatment, as a medicine in the end of the day and working in the pharmaceutical uh, area. And this gives us a slight different opportunity to introduce to the market uh, new phytomedicines new medicines based on phytocannabinoids. And this is a slight uh, different segment, and I would say much more long-term and uh, bigger, as we see of uh, the recent news around GW. Okay, so 
that's the reasoning and it sounds pretty self-explanatory it's quite obvious but at the same time it doesn't give you any uh doesn't give you any any news or anything that could say right, we're coming into the market so it's basically to say okay we're, we're opening the door but we don't know if that door's going to be shut okay so that's really important here when we're looking at a company we automatically think right let's get on the the bandwagon let's see this is a cannabis company it's on the on the London Stock Exchange, they're getting into the the uh, the industry in 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 Europe, but really, does that actually make you want to invest in it? I mean, there's nothing there that it tells you to excite you in the sense that uh, there's nothing that's proven. This is what I'm trying to say. We need something for to invest to to give us that confidence. So let's see if we have something that will make us really want to invest in this company. Let's see. Let's go on further. It's not just limited to cannabinoids but other natural substance. And the product which called Artemic has completed the phase two study uh, late last year. In December, we released the results which were 100% success in the prevention of the escalation of the patient diagnostic with COVID-19. And Okay, so that sounds interesting. So yeah, phase is a phase, uh, their second phase, and 100% success rate. So yeah, it starts to become interesting prevent the creation of the cytokine storm, which is the main reason for uh, the need in ventilation, the patient getting into the ICU. Uh, alongside, we're able to recover the patient from their symptoms uh, nearly half of the time that uh, non-treatment would take them. We saw that after less than 10 days, all the patients in the treatment group were below uh, the clinical uh, criteria of the FDA uh, of symptoms, while the placebo group uh, had it still after 14 days. Okay, so good. And their results there, trials there, and good results so far. Okay, so mm, does this sound promising? Yeah, it does sound promising. Let's see if it has anything else to say. Well, that's very encouraging. Uh, what are your ultimate ambitions for this business? I do believe that we are looking at ourselves as a pharma, as a biopharma company, uh, opening the door to other natural medicines, not to stay as a complementary medicine or herbal preparation, but to give the legitimacy, not just uh, medical cannabis to be listed on the LSE, but also to give the legitimacy of uh, phytomedicines to be able to be prescribed and uh, available globally. So let's get into the nitty gritty of stuff. Let's have a look at a presentation. So uh, um, shares, they have actually 1.7 billion shares, uh, ordinary shares uh, at the moment. At the, well, that's actually at the time of listing. Uh, the code, as we've mentioned earlier on, is MXC. They actually have a market cap of uh, 50 million. In fact, I think it's a little bit more now because they've just raised some money most recently. In, uh, uh, so it could be a little bit more. Um, so, but anyway, 50, I think it's between 50 and 60 million uh, market share, uh, market cap, uh, have 15 million uh, uh, performance shares and rights. Uh, the share price was 2 cents, 2.8 cents, but it's riding up, it's well, doubled that nearly uh, as of, uh, of this, the time of recording today, which is the 16th of February. So yeah, and they have a cash in the bank. They have $1.4 million uh, in the bank. So this is a little bit about their, their their mission. So their mission is to build an innovative, vertically integrated biopharma company, providing a standardized, affordable uh, phytocannabinoid-derived medicines in the, of the highest uh, quality. Uh, so this is the total number of units, uh, global units they sold uh, throughout, so the, 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 what they have at the moment. So from here, we can see that there were just very, very little in back in uh, 2000 uh, in January 2020 they sold just over 2,000 uh, prescribed units and now uh, towards the end of the year of the, of the end of the year they were just unsure of 4,000 just under 4,000 uh, units sold okay so not bad not bad at all so let's have a look at the board of directors. As you know, I always like to go through the the management, the actual company itself, to see who we're dealing with. We've seen uh, Robbie Zoma, uh, part of his interview. Uh, so I'll let you decide for what he's been saying. But we want to see what he, what experience he has, right? So he's been uh, 10 years of experience in the biotech and agrotech uh, sectors, along running large scale projects. He's uh, joined MGEC Pharmaceuticals as the executive director. 
and he's leader, been a leader in research and development as well as ensuring top performance for their global operations. Okay, so okay, as uh, 10 years experience, and then we want to see a little bit more to that. Okay, so normally I'd have a look at the CEO, but I want to see if there's anyone else behind uh, behind uh, that. And uh, we have the next guy, which has 20, uh, Brett Mitchell, which is the executive chairman and founder. And he has over 20 years of experience. Okay, so he's responsible for the corporate strategy, capital markets, and the financial management of the company. Okay, so he looks like he's been in. Yeah, he's been the been building the new industry. Uh, he was started off when it was in, in Australia. Uh, so yeah, and then we have a founder of the MGC, and uh, looks like the partner. He's from an Israeli uh, licensed medical cannabis. Uh, with a 10 years experience we have dr parker uh, he has over 30 of e years of experience uh, okay so yeah we have a okay we have quite a p few people in the industry and uh, know what they're doing with quite a lot of experience so it uh, looks quite looks like a real solid um, management team we have here so yeah, we're going to look at the company highlights. So they have uh, growing products, uh, sales in Australia, New Zealand, UK, Ireland, Brazil, uh, and opening more markets in the EU and Israel. Uh, okay, they have in the EU a GMP certified manufacturing facility. Okay, which with a three-year GMP license, they have their three medicinal products as we saw before that are in clinical trials, and they have also other products that are, have a wide IP development, which we've also seen. They have a rapid growing patient base okay and they have global distribution via an extensive network of commercial partners worldwide okay and finally they have a they're supported by a leading clinical advisory uh, of experts so as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they've actually just raised some funds. They've raised five million pound in in fundings. Uh, so this is a little bit about how what they're going to do with that five million uh, pound that they've raised. So the first two and a half million pound is to meet the costs associated with the third uh, phase of the clinical trial. Uh, then this one point uh, one and a quarter million is to meet the costs associated with the phase two B clinical trial and aspect of Canapil. Okay, which is their other product and then they've got quarter of a million that uh, increases the distribution of groups product range and expansion into markets including brazil and the european countries and another quarter of a million on the meat meeting the registration cost for the artemic in the new market so that's one of the other products they have including russia middle east and europe and then the finally the last quarter of a million is to use uh, for general working capital including funds to complete the construction of the group's proposed manufacturing facilities in malta so also they've just launched a, a new study into brain cancer as well so yeah there's a lot going on at the same time there's a lot going on at the same time and it worries me to some sort of extent because i think they're doing too much uh, I'm no, I'm no expert in industry. Uh, pharmaceuticals, I don't know. Even though I have studied biochemistry, I'm no in expert. But I can tell you that uh, a five million uh, is not a lot. So what they have on their ba balance sheet uh, and what they've raised, uh, five or six million uh, pounds, I think it was dollars, uh, is that enough to push them forward? Uh, I think they're calling out for a uh, institutional investor to come along, and I don't know whether an institutional investor would invest in this on the circumstances uh, of what it's like being in the UK. I mean, the UK is not the US. And Joe Biden is a president that will probably push this forward in the US. But in the UK, Europe is just a completely different ball game, And I don't know how far behind they are uh, in that sense. So it is a risk uh, and it is little money that they have. Uh, but on the basis of this, I, I like the excitement behind it. So for me, it's a bet. It's a pure bet and it's very, very risky. Very, very risky indeed. Having said that, I would take, uh, and I have taken a small part of this on my portfolio. Uh, I think it's like 0.15%, half a percent. I've put some uh, into this company. So yeah. So that's a little bit about the company, guys. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a big like. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That helps my channel grow. Thank you, guys, and I'll speak to you soon.